foramen lacerum. <laughs> Gee, Sam, that's a bit specific, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, um, these videos, their original purpose was to give me extra time to teach the students that I teach. And one of the things about teaching is trying to answer those questions that keep coming up. The question that I'm trying to answer here is, so what goes through foramen lacerum? Because the answer, well, nothing really doesn't seem to be good enough. So this will be a short video because we're looking at something very specific, but what exactly is foramen lacerum? What do you mean nothing goes through it? Well, why is it there then? And what's nearby? We get to talk about um, some petrosal bits and bobs. You'll see. Don't be put out. I'm not gonna use your skull. I'm gonna use this skull, all right? Um, here's the skull take the calvarium off the skull cap, whoop, and we look inside, we're looking at the cranial floor, and in the cranial floor there are a number of holes, foramina, a foramen, a hole in a bone, allows something to pass through it most of the time, a nerve, an artery, a vein, and students spend time learning those things because then they understand where structures run and if the skull is injured, damaged, fractured, um, they understand what could be injured by that damage, right? So, in here, we can see some of the classic foramen. We can see an oval one, <laughs> that's the oval foramen. We can see foramen spinosum next to it, which is like it's been made by something spiny. And then there's um, a <laughs> lacerated, you know, a, a lacerated hole would be like a torn hole, a jagged hole, an unclean hole. And that's what foramen lacerum is. Um, I don't really want to poke something through it because that makes students think that something goes through it. Uh, <laughs> but that there is foramen lacerum. Now what's difficult to see on a plain white skull like this? Well, there's a lot of things that are difficult to see, but it's difficult to see the individual bones. What we've got in here is we have the sphenoid bone, we have the temporal bone, and we have the occipital bone they all meet, they all come together um, where we find foramen lacerum. Now normally, when bones come together, we have a joint. Um, what we're not seeing here, so this is a plastic model. If this was, this is obviously based on um, the real bones of a skull. If this was a real bony skull, we'd have the same problem. We'd have a hole where foramen lacerum is in life there isn't a hole there. In life, is it a joint? It's filled with cartilage. So if it is a joint in life, that would be a synchondrosis, a primary cartilaginous joint where bones come together and they're joined by, by hyaline cartilage. So in life, if the cartilage was intact, if the other connective tissues were intact, we wouldn't see that hole because it would be filled with cartilage. It's just that because the bones have been separated and dried and all those other tissues have been removed and um, replaced with plastic in some cases so that we can actually put the ribs together, but all these cartilages have actually been removed. Um, and so the cartilage for foramen lacerum has been removed and not been replaced like it has for these cartilages. That's why we see a hole. I'll show you. Look, we can also see on this painted skull where we can see uh, the bones are different colours. The occipital bone is blue, temporal bone is brown, sphenoid bone is red. You can see that there is a gap between these three bones. There is a joint there. <laughs> Which means that maybe you could also call this the sphenopetrocleaval synchondrosis if you really felt like it. Sphenoid bone petrous part of the temporal bone, the clevis is the slope of the occipital bone here, sphenopetrocleaval synchondrosis, but uh, does anybody see here? I have three-ish, 3D printed bones, massively oversized. I didn't print them specially for this video, these were just kicking around in my office because that's the sort of guy I am. Uh, this is the sphenoid bone here, uh, this is the, the, the temporal bone here, so the sphenoid bone was the one in the middle. And this is part of the occipital bone. And if we put these bones together, they kind of fit kind of well. Here 
is the temporal bone and that rocky lumpy bit is the petrous part. So those two would go together something like that. Can you see there's a bit of a gap there? Here's the, well it's just a bit of the occipital bone because it's a bit too big at this scale to print out my 3D printer in one go. But if I put this on, you can see how where those three bones come together, there is a gap. That's a gap between the bones. It's not a hole through an individual bone. It's a gap between the sphenoid bone, the temporal bone, and the occipital bone. Hey, you can see another gap back there as well, made between two bones, and that is the jugular foramen. Now the jugular foramen does allow lots of things to go through, cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and the internal jugular vein. But up the foramen lacerum is primarily a joint between those three bones. Does that explain what foramen lacerum is and why it's there? Now, different skull bones are shaped a little bit differently, so this will look a little bit different in each skull. So that is what you're looking at when you're looking at foramen lacerum on a, on a skull. It's a joint between the bones. Um, a synchondrosis, maybe. Um, what goes, so <laughs> yeah, this is addressing the, con the question. So what goes through foramen lacerum? And the lie is nothing goes through foramen lacerum because none of the big structures go through. No big arteries, no big veins, no cranial nerves. But um, up here, is where we find the cavernous sinus, one of the dural venous sinuses. Down here is where we find the pterygoid venous plexus, uh, plexus of veins in the deep face. Those two venous structures are linked by small veins. And some of those small veins pass between the cavernous sinus and the pterygoid venous plexus by passing through the cartilage that fills foramen lacerum. We call these emissary veins, these little tiny linking veins. Also, passing through that cartilage of foramen lacerum are some small little meningeal branches from the ascending pharyngeal artery, which itself is a branch of one of the branches of the external carotid artery. Now, see, now it sounds like lots of things go foramen la through foramen lacerum, but no, these are just little, little blood vessels supplying blood to the meninges, little veins draining. Or maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe. Emissary veins pass through the cartilage of foramen lacerum and small meningeal arteries pass through the cartilage of foramen lacerum. So that's the truth to the lie, all right? But there is a little bit more to it. This is the internal uh, carotid artery. Now, this, the internal carotid artery does not pass through foramen lacerum. It passes through the carotid canal, but when it leaves the carotid canal, inside the cranial cavity, it lies upon foramen lacerum. So it lies next to it, it lies over it. it, it covers it, and then continues up here and becomes the middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral artery. But, those of you that are into your detailed anatomy here will know that the sympathetic nerves that get to much of the face, that get to the orbit and what have you, to get up into the cranial cavity, the many sympathetic neurons pass with the internal carotid artery. And when the internal carotid artery is lying upon foramen lacerum, those sympathetic neurons, some of them come together and form a nerve. That nerve is the deep petrosal nerve. So the deep petrosal nerve is a bundle of sympathetic neurons. And the greater petrosal nerve is a nerve Another small nerve, mostly filled with parasympathetic nerve fibers, some taste fibers. And those two nerves, so deep petrosal nerve, sympathetic, plus greater petrosal nerve, parasympathetic, become the nerve of the pterygoid canal, or the vidian nerve. Um, which is incredibly difficult to demonstrate unless you've 3D printed your own sphenoid bone and created that canal in it yourself. So here's the sphenoid bone again. There's anterior, posterior. That there is the pterygoid canal. 
So that is where foramen lacerum is. So that is where the internal carotid artery is lying. That is where the deep petrosal nerve is forming from those little sympathetic fibers coming together to form a nerve. And that is the nerve of the pterygoid canal. And if you pass a pipe cleaner through, it comes out where you find the pterygopalatine ganglion, uh, deep in the face, which sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers will run off to to innovate structures of the face. So if you're trying to understand where the pterygoid canal is, and why wouldn't you, um, that's your landmark. Sphenoid bone, temporal bone, don't make me pick up the occipital bone again, um, but that's foramen lacerum there, the gap between the bones, and in foramen lacerum, that's where we, find, well, you know, foramen lacerum is filled with cartilage, but thereabouts is where we find the, um, the pterygoid canal. And this is the nerve of the pterygoid canal. There will also be a small artery and a small vein of the pterygoid canal in there. Um, but the deep petrosal nerve plus the greater petrosal nerve come together to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal or the vidian nerve. Too much. What's the clinical relevance of this? <laughs> no idea. The internal carotid artery is very important. It helps you understand where it runs. Helps you understand that the cavernous sinus is linked to the pterygoid venous plexus. Um, the nerve of the Vidian canal is important in normal innovation of, you know, sympathetic and parasympathetic innovation of the face. Maybe you have a better understanding now of where the, the pterygoid canal and the nerve of the pterygoid canal are, also known as the Vidian nerve. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But I keep getting asked that question, what goes through forum and lacerum? So now I've answered it in far more detail than anybody needs to know, I should think. Okay, I'll move on to more sensible topics again next week. See you next week. Mm -hmm.